this review might be a little bit unexpected because it's not Doctor Who, it's not a Doctor Who spin-off. Although Big Finish is a regular piece of content on my channel, I've never gone out of the Doctor Who universe before and there is a big reason for that and it is because this is a Doctor Who themed channel and it wouldn't really make sense. But today I'm going to be doing exactly that and I'm going to be going out of the Doctor Who universe, still taking a look at a Big Finish release though however, and taking a look at The Invisible Man. Now admittedly I would have never even considered reviewing this release on the channel, I may have considered buying it but I wouldn't have reviewed it because it is not Doctor Who content but as you will all know by now we've just recently lost John Hurt as an actor because he's unfortunately died to cancer and I think that it's sort of my way in a way of reviewing it and taking a look at what he could do because although this month as this was previously released for January it's of course got moved now to February and it is out now I think that although we have also got coming up the recent final box set of the John Hurt War Doctor line I think it's just right to take a look at something out of the Doctor Who universe because in a way it's still the War Doctor and it's sort of a part of him well he is always alive of us anybody who dies in the Doctor Who universe is always alive because they will always be there in their character and I think that I just want to sort of get in a way a little bit more in contact with the actual actor of John Hurt to an extent by taking a look at something that is unrelated to the Doctor Who universe and that is exactly what I'm going to be doing today I'm aware straight away before I've even edited and even finished filming this review will probably not get the response that a normal Doctor Who review would understandably because it's not Doctor Who this is a Doctor Who channel and you are here for Doctor Who and if you're one that's not even read HG Wells in the past like me or if you've not even listened to anything on Big Finish other than Doctor Who related stuff then I highly urge you to go and buy this release regardless of what I think of it because I think that in a way it's just sort of nice to actually listen to a story I do believe that this is probably one of the last ever things that he did whilst alive it is the last ever production that you probably put out on audio so yeah i think it's just a nice little farewell piece and as i say something i just wanted to take a look at not going to be going into it in full details because it is a massive hg well story however i just sort of wanted to say a bit of a farewell to an extent by taking a look at one of his final pieces of work first off as always with big finish reviews in the description below i believe the link to go and buy this release from the big finish website it is out now and it is 14.99 for the physical release along with that you also get the digital version however if you just want the digital version it is is only 12.99 with two hours long to an extent two hours and a half something like that i did listen to it all within one sitting because it is although it does sound long you need to remember it is pretty much a whole hg wells book condensed down into one whole audio play so i think that is actually quite a reasonable time limit Taking a look at some of the details on the Big Finish website, including some of the credits. The producer is David Richardson, the script editor is Matt Fitton, the executive producer is Jason Hu Ellery and Nicholas Briggs. And then we also have generally as the cast, John Hurt, of course, playing Griffin, Blake Ritson playing Kemp, Peter Noble playing Thomas Marvel, Dan Starkey playing Teddy Heffery, Anna Bardland playing Miss Hall, and then quite a lot of other people as well, because this is, of course, a whole book, and it is, of course, written by H.G. Wells, and it has been dramatised by Jonathan Barnes, which is a regular Big Finish writer. Once again, he's done quite a lot of Big Finishes in the past, and it is directed by Ken Bentley. To the plot for this story, I'm not going to go into the whole thing, because it is, of course, a whole book, and I don't have all day to talk to you about this release as much as I would like to. Basically, it's a brief summary. It's about a person that, kid you not, is, in fact, invisible. You won't see that coming, would you? But, yeah, he's played by John Hurt, of course, and he's called Griffin and he's sort of a, in a way I would like to call him a mad scientist to an extent, he wants to evolve and be something different to an extent, he does in fact do that by becoming invisible, it is of course sci-fi because no doubt this is questionable for reality, it probably wouldn't be able to happen especially in the time that this was written H.G. Wells was definitely a very interesting character because he was before his time to an extent, in a brief way of putting it, because he did write a lot of different things that would be questionable for even now let alone when he was writing this, but yeah he is an interesting writer and I think that regardless if you've not really listened or read anything of him in the past I think that this is an intriguing listen because if you generally just like books or stories this is one of which which is a very interesting one going around the different events of what happens with the invisible man quite a lot of dark elements in there as well such as how he became invisible what he did to become that the different experiments that he did to learn how you could do different things I think that is a very intriguing thing and I'm guessing that the book much like anything that has been dramatized into a film from the book or novel adaptation I think that there is things missing to an extent there will be because that is natural of course the Harry Potter films there is a lot of differences between the films and the actual text that were created by JK Rowling and I think that with this it was on those ones I couldn't in fact tell what was missing because I've not read the book however it's a really nice representation of what the story would have been the format of the release is sort of split into two parts you have the first episode where we have him mainly in this one town with a hotel called the Coach and 
horses and then we have him sort of going out and sort of evolving to different places and in a way going on a little bit of a tour around the UK and going to different parts and as the media follows as it would with the different headlines and things and how he's done certain things and he is a very mysterious character in the very early parts of the story we get to see him in this hotel and the way that he needs to go and get money of course to actually stay in the hotel and in residence there so he goes and robs it old church and then comes back of course with him being invisible that is in fact incredibly easy and very early on in the episode we get a lot of different things where we have suspicion of who exactly he is there is a lot of mystery behind him of how when one of the dogs tried to bite him the cuff of his trousers lifted up and there was nothing there at all of course because he's invisible I think that it is very well done the way they sort of built up the different aspects of the story I think it definitely keeps you guessing very much and having the cast in there as well constantly questioning it makes you constantly question also I think to an extent even though it's called the invisible man I sort of went into it sort of expecting something in a way that wasn't exactly too relevant to the title but it turns out he was literally an invisible man which you know who would have thought it get into John Hurt's acting straight away I think that I've not really admittedly even though he is an excellent actor he's been in a lot of different things such as the elephant man and he's had numerous amounts of different awards he's played lots of different trans dressing characters as well in different things he has done a lot of different stuff and I think that that is why he's become an incredibly famous actor and he does something once again if this was on TV it probably would be up there with something of the equivalent of the elephant man because it is a very much sort of a famous character that's been portrayed by him one of many he of course also in recent years he's been reintroduced to younger people as well of course the main example for me would of course be Doctor Who is the war doctor in the 50th anniversary but for other people of course he played Mr Ollivander and Harry Potter and um, I only just recently watched that as well it was one of those ones that could adjust to different roles he could be in TV film smaller productions and things like that and specifically for this role he was incredible I think that he played an absolutely excellent part the way that he was very mysterious of course once again not to reference really too much to the war doctor but I think that the war doctor is one of those ones especially on big finish where you have sort of this angry side coming out and this unlikable side and sort of this very grouchy side when it comes to different human beings and different interactions of people however this sort of have a nice side as well and they've done exactly that with this release because we have in a way elements of sympathy in there we have him sort of going around and about his daily life and doing this devotion I guess to what he does as soon as he did it and he went out into London to see that he in fact was invisible he soon straight away came across certain problems that he couldn't talk to people as much and he couldn't really do certain things and come into contact because that would blow his cover and people would sort of seem to an extent as well as snow coming down would sort of outline his figure I think that he didn't really think through certain things something that certainly played on in the later half of this because we have another person coming into it called Kemp who was sort of a friend of the invisible man or Griffiths and we have a revelation at the end where he in fact has sort of a little bit of a left open I don't know if H.G. Wells ever really adapted it I don't know if he wanted to adapt it but we had sort of the potential to lead on to something else essentially the second invisible man and I think that especially towards the end where we have him in fact going for Kemp and wanting to murder him because he just enjoyed it to an extent because he was physically going insane and then at the very end of course no, not really a spoiler but the invisible man does in fact die and there is a little bit of a mixed feeling there because by this point he has killed a few people he's killed a cat which you know quite a lot of people like pets admittedly I felt sorry for the cat quite a lot at the very end when he does in fact sort of get beat to death by the village people and we have this incredible scene where he is killed and we have sort of the actual person slowly being revealed because of course he does this thing to make him invisible and once he's dead that thing can no longer work so he does that and you sort of have this older person slowly being revealed and I think that the way that that was dramatized in audio form was absolutely excellent I really did love that scene at the very end I thought it was very emotional once again very clever the way that it was done because you did sort of feel sympathy for him at the same time of him being a disliked person the very start of the story uses a format to go back in time to see the events of what in fact happened so in a way it wasn't really present tense but it also was because we went into sort of a dream state to see exactly what happened and it is told through the eyes of two people that clearly says on the big finish website and now a scholarly called Dr Kemp and a gentleman of the road called Thomas Marvel and throughout the story we sort of go between their different versions of events and it's not really that they're just narrating it because they aren't they sort of have personal aspects of it they're in fact a part of the story of course Dr Kemp is in the later part 
Starks and we have a lot more influence from him. And Marvel is a person, Thomas Marvel is a person that in fact came into contact with the Invisible Man several times and sort of aided him on his journey, but at the same time he realised that he was a dangerous person. And of course him sort of had, with him being invisible, there was a threat there that he could do absolutely anything to him and people would never know. I think that is a very interesting way that it is done. Of course this is not for sort of the younger listener, of course, if you're not really a person that has got used to audio before. I don't know, if you're used to reading, if you're a person that loves books, I think that this may be something you would really enjoy. If you're somebody to never really go into audio before, especially with this, as it's not Doctor Who or anything like that, if you are a Doctor Who viewer, I guess, I think that it's something which it is a little bit more complicated. It's not a sort of simplified down in any way. It is complex in parts. There are certain different characters in there. No doubt there would have been a few more characters in the book itself, but I do think that they've sort of, they've took out certain parts. However, you must remember that it is still the H.G. Wells text under there, meaning it wasn't really written for the younger audience to an extent, really. It was sort of written by and for the adults, I guess. And I think that even though, you know, I'm not really one of the people, I wouldn't really say that I'm the demographic for H.G. Wells, to put it bluntly, but I think that with this, I enjoyed it. As I say, I listened to it all in one sitting, and I think that it is an incredible text, and I can definitely see why people look back on H.G. Wells as this person that definitely, as I say, I sort of describe him as somebody who's not from his time because he had a very interesting take on life and even the science that he uses using sort of this potion to sort of create the tissue and make it invisible exactly possible to an extent but he makes it sound possible the way that he needs to create different things to sort of make the bones invisible then the organs and even sort of the slight details in this story where you had him walking along with Thomas Marvel and he says oh what have you had for dinner I can tell cheese and crackers because it hadn't sort of evolved into him yet so there was essentially some cheese and crackers floating around sort of in midair of course which would have been in his stomach and I think just little features like that once again really work for audio there were several points in this as well where I had descriptions of him lifting out the gun of people's pockets and saying that it looked oddly relaxing and beautiful and the way that he had different flowing things and him going through different things and opening the doors it was very well done because we had the mixture of description in there but not once did it really go to a narration because it was done completely through the characters it is a full cast audio drama however it was a really good balance of the two to an extent cast as well is also excellent there is quite a lot of different people in there that I didn't really get to know too much because of course with it being a whole HG Wells book there wasn't really much time to have different people and it was a little bit lengthy meaning admittedly I did forget who a few people were here and there because as I say it's quite a long thing but probably from just reading it out earlier a few of the casting credits and things such as Dan Starkey you know there is a few people that are big finish regulars in this and I think that definitely the cast perform it incredibly well of course especially John Hurt because it is essentially his story and I think that this is such an excellent release for that because we play with lots of different ideas you really get to know the invisible man because even though it's told from the other people's perspectives you get to know it from the invisible man's perspectives as well and you know it, you really get to sort of have this mixture of emotion as I say it is incredibly well written and let's give credit as well not just to H.G. Wells but Jonathan Barnes who in fact dramatized this for audio which that would have been an incredibly big job to do because of course it, it probably would be a book about that big I don't even know but yeah it would have been a really hard job to do probably and I think that he's definitely pulled it off very well. But as I say, that's that. I'm not really going to go into all the details because I don't really think I need to. I just think that I need to cover the facts of it is a really nice listen. I think that if you are into, as I say, literature and things like that, or sort of older text, Charles Dickens, you know, all the standard ones that you could imagine, Shakespeare, H.G. Wells, you know, the time machine and things, this is the first of many, even though this does seem quite oddly timed the way that we have this invisible man and then sort of accompanied with his death at the same time. It is just an unfortunate coincidence. There is going to be other releases this year as well from Big Finish, such as I do believe um, the Martian Invasion of Earth, which is like one of the last ones, the Island of Dr. Munro or something like that. They're doing a lot of different H.G. Wells adaptations, which no doubt I probably won't be reviewing because, you know, it's not really related to John Hurt. And as I said, the main reason why I did want to review this was because of the recent passing of John Hurt. And I sort of just wanted to show respect to that extent and take a look at something that wasn't fully Doctor Who related, because I think that if it was a Doctor Who review, it would get a little bit congested down in the story and we would be taking a look at as I said, the War Doctor more than John Hurt himself, and I just sort of wanted to take some time to actually reflect on him as a person and an actor out of the Doctor Who universe. And as I say, if you are a Doctor Who fan who has been a regular viewer of my channel, thank you very much for watching. Even though that this is not a Doctor Who release, you know it shows that you are interested genuinely in John Hurt. I just like thanks for actually watching this because it is something completely new. And admittedly, from a channel perspective, this is probably a risky review. So yeah, to start the review. I will leave a link in the description below to go and buy this release 
release from the Big Finish website. It's out now. If you're a H.G. Wells fan or a Doctor Who fan, just buy it. Get £15 and seriously buy it. Buy it for the sake of literally this is John Hurt. It's one of the last things that he did and honestly reflect on the man that he actually was and the man that he still is because he will always be with us. And I'd just like to end off, of course, with John Hurt himself. I think that he was an amazing actor, an amazing person generally. It is incredibly sad to see him go emotional. When I woke up, I'd actually seen that he did unfortunately pass away. I was shocked. I, I just didn't expect it coming and it is such a shame much like anybody and all of the actors and actresses that have died in the past year I think that this is definitely one of those ones and I've in fact had a doctor in my lifetime that has in fact passed away and this is the first and I think that even though he didn't really have a major role in the actual TV show he did only appear once but Big Finish have gone on to do something excellent with him and again on this release as well he probably would have done a few more releases in the future but just focusing on the things that he's done even though he's gone it's not like he's left behind nothing he's left behind tons of media work tons of excellent things tons of films to live on him one of those people that we will look back fondly on because he is one of those people that we will probably miss greatly so thanks for watching this review if you enjoyed it please do give it a big like please subscribe if you're not already if any questions please do leave them below and i'll be sure to answer them at some point in the near future thanks again for watching and as always i will see you all next time so thanks for watching and bye for now